Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. That is the truth. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. I just finished the audio title Lightbringer, which is the sixth in a series, and I just love it. It's so detailed, and being able to listen to it really, really helps me keep up with what's going on. Try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappins or text crappins to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappins or text crappins to 500 500 Well, hello and welcome to Watch What Crappens, the podcast for all that crap we love to talk about on Yo Bravs. Everybody, welcome to this show. I'm Ronnie, and guess who I'm with today? It's actually very shocking. I'm not with anyone. Okay, where's Ben? Where's Benoons? Did he leave me? Did he divorce me? He did not. He actually got appendicitis, so he's in the hospital getting um, appendix surgery. Uh, and if he comes back with new breasts, um, I just want to have been the first one to call it, because I don't believe for a second he's just in there for appendix. <laughs> okay? But we're not going to find that out for a couple of days. Um, that means that for the rest of this week... You are just with me. Now, that can be scary. It can be very scary, guys. Ben does a lot for this show. He's not only half of this show, but he is 100% the reigner in of me. So that's not existing. So if you get annoyed, um, I really don't blame you. Okay? Welcome to being just like every other person in my life. Okay? There is a reason that I'm alone forever. Okay? Is it by choice? Possibly. Mostly other people's choice. Okay, uh, and you'll understand why by the end of this recap. So let's get into it. Welcome to the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Okay, so we open up the episode on the set of Orange is the New Black. Yes, Angie K's prison home. This is a terrifying looking house. Cinder block. It's a cinder block home, like in a jail. Now, I don't know Angie well enough from this show. She hasn't really shown us enough to really get to know. I know that she likes stupid glasses. Um, I know that she acts like she's in a community theater production of something and hasn't quite learned her lines. Um, but I do not know the rules of her house. I'm guessing one of them is uh, not to drop the soap because <laughs> that is a prison home. So she's in there and she's making Easter baskets. And it's not just Easter baskets, okay? They're invitations. And they're not just regular Easter invitations, you guys. It's Greek Easter. So... What Greek Easter is, is it's about celebrating Christ rising from the dead because some people, they took Christ and they killed him and then they put him in a cave. But in Greek Easter, there was a dolma covering the cave and someone with a gigantic miraculous appetite ate the dolma and let Jesus come back to life and escape into the world to give him just enough time to create Olympia Dukakis, who changed the world of entertainment landscape forever. Opa, amen. I am Greek. So I guess Greek Easter is kind of like regular Easter, but they play songs from Zorba the Greek or some shit once the boulder moves out of the way. I don't know. But it's Greek Easter, and I'm just going to go with it. Okay? So should you. So this terrifying bunny comes to deliver all these Easter basket gifts to everybody and shock them in real life. The bunny is, like, sitting in the back of Heather's Range Rover. <laughs> all creepy like and heather gets into the car kind of how i get into the car she just gets into the car and looks straight in the back seat to make sure that there's nobody there um which i feel like this woman has watched a lot of lifetime because i have and that is how i get into cars because i just figure you know i think it's something about getting older where you're just like there is possibly something there to kill me at every moment but you know what at this point like what am i going to do run like i'm not going to run i don't run you know what i mean ever like I don't run for a missing subway. I don't run if someone's chasing me. I'm not going to run. So instead, just deal with it. You know, you just look in the back seat. Like, just where do you want to go? You don't even have to kill me. I'll take, I'll just take you wherever you want. Okay. What do you want? Here's my purse. All right. <laughs> I'm going to the home goods if you'd like a ride. 
So yeah, I think Heather has faced her fears. The bunny comes to Whitney and shockingly, I don't know if Whitney thinks that like Justin has found a new kink or whatever, but she jumps right on top of the bunny. Poor thing barely got away. Let's cover each other in chocolate. Of course, the bunny goes to Mary and her reaction is basically, you're ugly. (laughs) Who dressed you? So let's go over to Urban Hill Restaurant for a Justin and Whitney date. Whitney opens that scene with her little dance, like her her bad dance. And they're not really playing any music, but you know that Whitney's just off the rhythm with that music. You know what I mean? Whitney with her opening, dancing like a bridesmaid that's just never able to quite catch the beat of Piano Man. It's a really interesting way they decorated the restaurant because it's like, column like platforms that you pass under but the platforms are all wine bottles it's like you're buried in wine bottles which is actually a perfect housewives crypt this is how housewives should be married so when whitney comes in here um and it's super awkward you know first of all they're going through a rough time in their marriage and i get it you know there's like ups and downs in every relationship but i think it's also awkward because i think those two really their love language was just fucking you know, it was like the secretary. It was like she was his secretary. And then they started fucking at the office. And it was like hot, you know, because he's like married and like powerful. And she's, you know, sexy and young. And they were just like, yeah, so sexual. It's like you don't talk a lot. You know what I mean? You just it's all the sex part right up front, which is, you know, not a terrible thing to base a relationship on. But then you have to stay with that person and actually start talking to them. And I can't imagine really either one of them is the winner in that scenario. You know what I mean? I don't think they ever had a conversation. I don't think ever, I don't think they ever had a conversation where one of them or both of them ever said, wow, that was a really good conversation. (laughs) This was, this was really worth it. Um, And you can tell at dinners like this, you know, that their relationship is just not built on conversing because they order their drinks, but then they don't do any talking. So like they order their drinks and then it just cuts to them getting their drinks. You know, that's a very bad sign. Cheers to our first night, our first date night of the year. That that's fucked up, Justin. I mean, wow. How's your new gig? (laughs) And he's like, wow, feels great to be uh, back at it for sure, you know? Crazy to be in a full work routine again, you know? I managed to keep my spray tan time in there. It was just great. They didn't really let me wear any of the knockoff Gucci t-shirts that you purchased me to the office, which kind of sucks. But I did get to keep the new teeth and the spray tan. So that's been good. He's like, you know, it's very overwhelming to balance all of this work and work life. She's like, it's I feel like I'm sinking because you come, like I come downstairs and then you come downstairs and then you just sit on the couch and you look at Instagram. It's like, I'm not just on Instagram, honey. It's like, "Uh uh-huh. Just yesterday, I was frantically cooking breakfast for the children and I have bacon on the stove and then Bobby and Brooks are screaming at each other and they need a referee, but I'm trying to cook breakfast and make lunches. And meanwhile, Rocky pees on my couch. So I hold my infinity necklace. And then I'm back. But then I realize I have the kids in a fight. I'm trying to get Rocky. I forget about the bacon. And then the fire alarm goes off. And I look over and Justin is just sitting there on his phone. God forbid you get up and flip a bacon for me. Okay, this is a very long story. But this is what I'm saying about your relationship. Whitney. Do you think Justin is surprised that you don't know how to make bacon? Whitney, this man's been living with you for years. I don't even live with you, and I know you don't know how to make bacon, right? You flat out read as a person who doesn't know how to make bacon, Whitney. Okay? He's not surprised, okay? Do you need Justin to suddenly be surprised about things? It's not going to be. So she's like, yeah, the other morning I needed help, and, like, you just ignored me. And he's like, rather than validate the fact, yeah, then validate me, because I need validation. And, like, why wouldn't you just be like, hey, Whitney, are you okay? He's like, I thought everything was okay. Why would you think everything is okay? It's just another day of burnt bacon, babe. (laughs) Burnt bacon is literally the smell of normalcy in this house. It's like, well, I always don't want to be the one having to bring things up. That's what I'm saying, because we have to talk about stuff. But then you don't bring up stuff to talk about. So then I have to. And he's like, okay, but then I don't always like to be the one who's initiating sex. And she's like, this isn't about sex. Okay, you just said you want him to talk about his issues. That's his issue. He's a very simple person. Okay, the man wants a spray tan. 
you know, somewhat burnt bacon is sex. And she's like, women have to connect to open up about sex. And so that's not working right now. Until you make some bacon, this booty ain't shaking. So then we get to the heart of the matter, which is that Justin is not wearing his wedding ring anymore. And he went back to work and he's not wearing his wedding ring. He leaves it in the drawer every day. And he just smiles at her. Like his response is like, yeah. Why aren't you wearing your fucking wedding ring, Justin? Okay. Whitney knows how she met you. Okay. She met you in the office while you were married to somebody else, sir. Okay. And that's not even coming from a huge place of judgment, but she knows what your ass is doing in the office and why your ass is not wearing a ring. This is a very, very bad sign. And the fact that he's not even trying to come up with an excuse like, wow, maybe I lost a little weight and I can't fit it on my finger anymore. Or, um, I don't want to get a, you know, I was getting a spray tan and I didn't, didn't want to get the little line, you know, on my finger or whatever. So that's why I'm not wearing it. I mean, something, come up with something. But just to smile at her, but just to smile at her is not good. I don't know what to do to fix that core connection. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. I don't want you to feel that way. Um, then put on your fucking wedding ring, sir. Yes, you do want her to feel that way. Put your ring on. Oh, this is trouble. I hope Whitney is selling a lot of positivity necklaces, okay? Because she needs to get the hell away from this person. Not trustworthy, Justin. Not trustworthy. Run, Whitney. Okay, now, look. Is Whitney a ding-dong? Yes, Whitney is a ding-dong, okay? Um, does Whitney start most of the crap on this show and get away with it every time? Sure. Okay, sure. Um, did Whitney get her husband in a questionable way? She did. Admittedly, she did, you know, and that's okay. Does Whitney deserve to be treated like this? Absolutely not. Whitney, you deserve better. Now, I will say, you know, you really need when you're okay. You know how there's the term dress for success. Okay. When you're dressing somebody else, which Whitney does, Whitney is definitely a wife who dresses her husband, right? Uh, you can totally tell. And I'm going to show you how in a minute. But Whitney dresses her husband. And I feel like she's not dressing her husband for success. I think she's dressing him for douchebaggery. Okay? She's kind of setting herself up to be with the douchebag by dressing him like a douchebag. Now, let's look at this picture. This is on Crappens on Demand, by the way, if anybody wants to see this picture. This is picture a picture of Whitney. She was on Watch What Happens Live. She brought Justin on. He is spray tanned to the gill. He's wearing his knockoff Gucci t-shirt. He's wearing a necklace that says Prada. He's wearing a jacket from God knows where. And then he's wearing a Gucci hat, but the Gucci hat is in the Louis Vuitton pattern. So I don't even know. Does that make it Gucci Vuitton? What is this? Douchebag. This is a douchebag. So you're dressing your husband like a douche, and then you can't be surprised when he suddenly doesn't want to wear his ring. Now that said, I don't want to victim blame. I'm just suggesting that um, maybe start taking him to Costco and getting him some some just very simple husband polos. Uh, no one wants to fuck a man in those Costco polos. And trust me, I have them all the time. I mean, it's basically like wearing a chastity belt out in public. So just a suggestion, Wit, because I love you. <laughs> So we get some groovy ha music and we go to the Wick Lab, which is a candle making place. Are these real places that exist? I've never been to like one of these. I've been to a Build-A-Bear, but there's a lot of places on Real Housewives. I just don't even believe are real places. A candle making place. And a lot of people are in there, too, making candles. I mean, I do know someone's making candles because candles are back. They're like literally everywhere. And can I just say to any of my friends who are listening to this, a candle does not count as a gift. Please stop giving me a fucking candle. OK, every time I get one of those, I feel like you're just hoping I'm going to get drunk one night and leave that thing on and burn myself up in a fire. <laughs> OK, it's not a gift. Get me something I would actually want. Nobody wants your stinky ass candle, especially if you made it yourself. So anyway, we go there with Lisa and Angie uh, to make candles. So Lisa's like, look at us making candles. Hi, candle people. Love that. I'm going to make a candle called Love That Candle. I hear that people like to pour hot wax on themselves. It's a fetish, but not for me. So they're smelling the different wax scents. Uh, there's one called bacon. 
which might I suggest while you're here, pick one up for Whitney. Is it properly cooked bacon? Can you just specify since you get to like make your own flavors at this place? Give Whitney a perfectly baked bacon scent and some male Costco polos for Justin. And I guarantee you that marriage will be fixed in about five minutes. But anyway, the scents of these candles are bacon and old book. And Angie's like, Old book smells like the Bible, like the New Testament, the New Greek Testament. It is like the Old New Testament, but it is written by Nia Vardalos. I'm Greek. So Lisa wants to do linen and tulip smell, which of course she's going to pick like a Febreze smell. That's just so Lisa. And Angie is going to do frankincense, myrrh, and clove. Greek Jesus. She's really into her Greek Jesus thing today. So she's going to stick with her frankincense and myrrh. What was the other thing the wise men brought? Frankincense, myrrh, baklava. So one of the candle ladies comes over and she's like, Hey, are you Jack's mom? I'm really close with Jack. God, I really like Jack. Could you ask him to cut his hair? It's really distracting. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm Jack's mom. Did you know that Jack is going on a mission? Did Jack tell you that before me? Seriously, why does everybody know before me that Jack is going on a mission? Hey, Kendall lady, do you have a Taco Bell Crunch Supreme Wrap smell so Jack can remember me when he's on his mission? <laughs> so they start mixing their candles, and uh, Angie's talking about her Greek Easter event. And Lisa's like, that invite with the bunny was so cute. He came to my house and I was like, hey, bunny, did you know that Jack is going on a mission before I did? And he died. And so I kicked him in the, I kicked him in the eggs. He cried. Have you ever seen a bunny cry? So Angie's talking about how she invited everybody to Greek Easter, even Monica. Though Monica is on thin ice, you know? And then we get a nice, ats, a thin ice, ats. And she's like, I invited her because I want to be inclusive, especially after what I went through in Palm Springs. You were not invited to Palm Springs in the first place, okay? You can't just show up somewhere you weren't invited to and then complain that it wasn't inclusive enough for you, okay? You weren't invited. You were literally not included. And Sean was begging me to invite Meredith because he knows all of her lines from seasons one, two, and three. But then we decided you do not get to come to our home when you are spreading gay rumors. Lisa's like, honestly, I've never heard that Sean is gay. Who says that about their friend? Angie, are you inviting her? Like, I'm really shocked a little bit. Like, why would you, why would you, why would you bring Monica? Cause like, that's not someone I would be like, hey, come learn about the Savior's resurrection with me. Now, of course, Lisa's going to do everything to turn Angie against Monica because Monica is constantly calling Lisa out, you know, and that's how this all works. But Lisa's not really wrong. So then we go over to Mary's house and Mary has been trying to microwave food, but doesn't really understand how microwaves work. And so she's confused as to why her food's not hot, which is just. It's like every Mary scene, isn't it? Except it doesn't take place in her closet. So to that, I say, good for you for making an effort. I mean, today she's in her living room, okay, in this scene. Before, when we saw her get the invitation from the bunny, she was actually out in her car. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's pretty good for Mary, you know? So far, we've not been in her closet. So her son comes in, and he's just like, hi. Like, the son always looks like he's getting away with something, you know? Like, he's sneaking out at, like, midnight, like... She's never going to catch me. Even though she is catch, she's talking to you, right? And you've already been caught, you know? She's like, sit down. I do not understand why this food's not hot. How do microwaves work? And he's like, oh, I don't know. Microwaves. <laughs> so Mary, after a year, is like, so I'm hearing from people that <laughs> you're <laughs> married. Are you? Married? I mean, is that true? And he's like, oh, um, married? Um, I don't know. You don't know. Are you married or are you not married? And she's like, yes, no, maybe, no, yes, no. Are you married? I mean, come on. Are you married? I mean, just please let it be no. Come on. What is it, son? Well, I'm kind of married. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I went to the courthouse. And Mary's like, seriously? So you just snuck? Where was I? You, you, you snuck? You, you went? You, you snuck out? And you, 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 just, you did it? You got married? Who do, like, who does that? He's like, yeah, it's been like a year. 
So Mary explains that this girl has been living with them, um, I guess, for a year or whatever, but she doesn't see them because they both have their own wings. One day she said they were getting really dressed up and then running around, but she didn't know why. Um, and it turns out because they were getting married. <laughs> what the hell? Now, of course, there's speculation of who this is. I could not find out who he was married to. Shockingly, there's not a ton of gossip about Robert Cosby Jr. It's crazy, isn't it? But um, really what I found was this charge from last year. Uh, this is from August 5th, 2021, and it's on the E! News website. And this is when Mary Cosby charged with unlawfully providing shelter to run away. Uh, Salt Lake City officials also charged Real Housewives star Mary Cosby with contributing to the delinquency of a minor. She previously pled not guilty to both charges. So apparently this person that they know ran away from home and I guess came to stay at Mary's house. And then Mary got in legal trouble for it. But then later the charges were dropped. Now, here's the only reason I'm bringing this up. It's because while many of the details surrounding the case remain private, court documents say the alleged offense took place on April 8th, 2021. It's unclear if Real Housewives of Salt Lake City's cameras captured the situation for its upcoming uh, second season. So if this one was filmed in 2223, a year before that would have been 21, right? So I'm wondering if this is the person that Robert Cosby Jr. married. But I don't know. That's gossip no one really cares about. I don't know. It's just trying to put things together on the online. So Mary doesn't take this great. And Robert... Robert Jr. isn't much help because he just sits there on the couch holding a pillow and smiling like dun, da, dun, da, dun, da, dun, da. and she's like, but you can't get married because you're the only person I have in the world. And now if you're married to somebody, I have nobody, which isn't a great sell. You know what I mean? Um, to your kid. I think that's if anything, that's a reason to just start running. She's like, don't be afraid to tell me anything ever. Always just tell me what's going on with you. And he's like, okay. Uh, but then she's telling us, yeah, he's not ready for marriage and he has to man up. I mean, I'm not going to be the sole provider of, of him and her. Okay, well, that's why he didn't want to tell you. Okay, you said he can tell you anything. He tells you he's married and so now you're going to cut him off. I wouldn't tell you either. What the hell? Bizarro. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. Watch What Crappens and Winter is Crappening are the funniest recap podcasts. But if you want something more eerie, try the new podcast, Ghost Story, about my investigation into a murder-suicide in my own family. Ghosts aren't real. At least, that's what I've always believed. Sure, odd things happened in my childhood bedroom, but ultimately, I shrugged it all off. That is, until a couple of years ago, when I discovered that every subsequent occupant of that house is convinced they've experienced something inexplicable too, including the most recent inhabitant who says she was visited at night by the ghost of a faceless woman. It just so happens that the alleged ghost haunting my childhood room might just be my wife's great-grandmother, who was murdered in the house next door by two gunshots to the face. Ghost Story, a podcast about family secrets, overwhelming coincidence, and the things that come back to haunt us. Follow Ghost Story wherever you get your podcasts. Listen everywhere on October 23rd, or you can binge early and ad free on Wondery Plus the same day. Okay, so let's go over to Heather's house. Her kid calls from college, Ashley calls from college, and what well, she's just gotten back from Cabo. And I feel like this is how every call goes with Heather and her kid. Oh my God, you were in Cabo? Aren't you glad you're not Mormon and wearing like long underwear here in the house with me? I mean, that would have been fun, right? God, thank God you're not Mormon anymore. Every conversation. I mean, that kid could say anything like, hey, what'd you do today? Oh, I went to Chili's and got, him, got an awesome blossom. <laughs> Aren't you glad you're not Mormon anymore? I mean, that blossom would have been a lot less awesome. You know, if you were wearing long underwear in the restaurant, probably would have been hot. Oh, hey, honey, how have you been? Oh, I've been good. I was at the candle shop making like a linen and old book scent. Oh, aren't you glad you're not Mormon? You would have just been making the scent of covered wagons and Brigham Young's Old Spice. I mean, isn't it nice not being Mormon? So they start talking about Jack. She's like, did I, she's like, did I tell you that Jack Barlow is going on a mission? And now she's like, oh God, didn't really see that one coming. I guess maybe all of his friends are doing it or something. I do remember him writing on his Instagram, Fudge College, honestly. Not really sure. 
that had something to do with it. And Heather's like, yeah, and they said that they go to church every Sunday. I mean, what? And Heather tells us how proud she is of Ashley for getting the hell away from all of this. And she's so glad her kid is in a string bikini in Cabo, you know? And she's like, I just look back at my journals from like my mission days. And I, they're just like, oh my God, I love God so much. I'm so obsessed with him. I just can't wait to spend more time with God. Like I'm going to be the best person I can be to marry the most righteous man I can be to have the most righteous children so I can have more time with God, which actually are very similar to my journals, except instead of God, I wrote ice cream. And I don't know, I still live by that. I love ice cream so much. I just can't wait to spend more time with ice cream. So she's saying it's a tough position to be in because your friend, your friend, quote unquote, is sending their kid on a mission. And that's just like, everything is like, that's everything that I'm socially, morally, physically, spiritually, calorically against, you know? Mom, why are you against Mormonism calorically? Caffeine. You know, one of the things that got me to turn against Mormonism was Frappuccinos. And Ashley's like, yeah, I can't believe that Lisa wouldn't have him talk to you, even though you're publicly against everything that he's doing. That is so crazy. Wow. Why wouldn't she just call you? Heather's like, I know, right? So we go over to Mary's house and Mary is pouring water and getting stuff ready and a fly flies by her and she's like, a fly, a fly in my house. You're ugly. You need to dress better, fly. Make more effort, fly. You have no fashion. So there's a ding dong at the door and then there's a sound of like, and so uh, Mary comes and opens the door and we find out that sound is just Meredith at the front door shaking her head with her hair caught in the wreath. <laughs> It's like, oh, God. Oh, hi. Thanks so much for having me over. And Mary's like, great, great. So good that you could come over. I got a cootery play, but I couldn't. I don't know how to use the microwave. Well, that's all right. You don't put charcuterie in a microwave. But I'm so glad that you have the official dish of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City here. Charcuterie. <laughs> Mary's like, yeah, it was kind of a long day because I had a conversation with Robert Jr. and he's married and that's a problem. And Meredith is like, what? She goes, well, I mean, everybody knows that he's married and I don't know that he's married. She's like, well, that is a little crazy. I can't imagine if my son was married. I'd say, what? Since when are toddlers allowed to get married? I need to get my signature at the very least. Meredith is like, so, Mary, why have you been keeping to yourself so much in the group? And we can only presume that she means, you know, like refusing to interact or only criticizing people or only talking when you're going to tell people that their outfits are ugly or that you hate their guts or not coming to group vents and going to McDonald's instead, et cetera, et cetera. And Mary's like, you know, it's just so tough to give people chances. And then like, you think you're going to go back into this crowd of people and like, they're going to grow and they haven't grown. Um, excuse me. What kind of group of people do you think this is? This is real housewives. Well, I'm not here for growth. Get the hell out of here. This isn't a farm. These are not seedlings. This is real housewives. The minute you start to grow, you die. The only reasonable time to grow is after you've been fired. Okay. So Meredith is like, well, I agree with you because everything that happened at the Opry Vita event was terrible. And Mary's like, don't you think you need taller boots? Oh, rise above it. Is that what you're trying to That's very clever, Mary. Well, also because your boots are ugly, so... Yeah, I mean, well, you know, Angie came for me, and I could have very easily clapped back at Angie, but I did tell her, you will not speak to me like this, and then I tried to exit, and an invisible force field kept bouncing me back into the room, and I could have said a lot of things. I am being accused of spreading rumors that Sean is gay, but you, do you understand how obscene that is? Homosexuality? Yes. No, the rumors that Sean is a homosexual. And she tells us that she's not spreading these rumors. My son is gay. I'm a huge supporter of the community. I'm even on the house committee for the Glad Awards. I would never comment on someone's sexuality. So Mary's like, did you get the invite? She goes, four. Bunny. Huh? I'm talking about the bunny. There was a bunny. There was a bunny. What bunny? It was a big rabbit. 
He had ears. Big ears. Ah. Uh, was he hiding his eggs around Gay Town, hoping his wife wouldn't find them? No, an actual bunny. Huh. Did it talk to you? It left me a card. Is your son married to the bunny? No, it was an actual bunny. It brought me an invitation. It was for Greek Easter. It's a, a, a brunch. Well, unfortunately, I will be out of town. I will be hosting the Glan Awards. Very exciting. Oh, that is, that is so great. You know, they're the only trash bags that don't leak. All right, well, I'll take what I can get with you, Mary. So Mary declares she will not go to an Easter bunny hunt until she sees change. Now we get my favorite haws, the And now we're at Angie's house and she is doing the full my big fat Greek wedding thing and roasting a goat outside her house. So she's getting her house ready for this party and she's like, hey, honey, can you help me with the icons? He's like, oh my God, Meredith is here. Icon! No, Sean, the religious icons. Look at all these stacks of ones. I think the bank is wondering why we need so many ones. Actually, I get ones out all the time, honey, so. For what reason? Never mind. We are going to teach the ladies how to do dollar dancing, and then they are going to say, Opa, as we throw ones onto the dance floor. So um, she gets a call from Mary, and uh, she's like, Hello, Mary. Good to hear from you. And Mary's like, Yeah, I'm calling you to know that I won't be making it, and I'm not really sure what you're wearing, but... It's ugly. So Angie's dad is there too, and she's talking about how he came to America from Greece, and um, his gift to them was loving the Greek culture. He never forgot where he came from, and apparently neither did she, <laughs> because I'm Greek. I'm Greek. I am Greek. Lisa comes, and she's like, oh my god, is that a baby lamb cooking? Oh my god. Hey, baby lamb, sorry you didn't get to go on a mission. Sorry you didn't get to go on a mission. You could have gone to Milan. You could have gone to Milan. Oh my God, looks beautiful in here, Angie. Love the stacks of cash. This is so Angie's house. So then Heather arrives and she's like, oh my God, Sean, you look amazing. Where do you get your clothes made? And he's like, my gay boyfriend. She goes, oh, you are so, <laughs> I've heard, I've heard. Then uh, Jack shows up with his his uh, his front facing pine cone hair. And he's like, mom, you're wearing so much makeup. And she's like, so I'll get it on you. Ah! He walks away like half of his face orange. Okay, so Monica shows up with her kids and her mom, right? And her mom is, you know, just doing the full mom thing. She she sees the dad. She sees Angie's dad, and they do the double kiss where you like, you know, it's not just a regular French like mwah, mwah, or the model mwah, mwah, or the Camille. Mwah. Um, uh, it's a very hard grasping of the face and then a, mm, uh, on a cheek and, mm, uh, on a cheek. And Angie's like, she knows the Greek kiss. And Linda's like, we know we're Portuguese. We kiss the same. Are you single, honey? Are you single? And he's like, I am single. She goes, yes, I'm single too. Linda's going to grift this man right out of everything. I don't know that much about Linda, but I do know this much. Watch her because she will walk out of this house trying to put that oat in a spit in her purse on the way out. She just seems like that kind of mom. So Monica's not amused that her mom came in and immediately started flirting. Monica is not having her mother today. Let's see where it leads. Greek ding, Greek ding, Greek ding, Greek ding. It's like a regular ding, but it's Greek. Okay, everybody, listen to me, please. I just want to start welcoming people to Greek Easter. Father George is the closest. We will get to God today. It means a lot to be able to share my faith with you people. I'm always inspired by Christ's resurrection. It's a story of hope because Christ was mocked and ridiculed and crucified, and he managed to rise up after three days. So if Christ can rise up after being murdered, surely I can rise up after Meredith marks the trampoline with eyes, calling my husband a homosexual, having sex in the streets. Basically the same thing. I would like to think if Christ was resurrected today, Sean would be there to give him a proper haircut. Unfortunately, nobody was worried about split ends in that time. So then this priest, who has been paid God knows how much money and is in a full costume, gives his prayer and he's like, I love Jesus. Okay, bye, opa. I was like, excuse you? Are you just going to take the money off the table and leave, sir? I'm going to need more from you here, preacher. Terrible review of the preacher. Terrible. One star, at best. So Whitney is like, wow, your speech really made me cry because I think it was about gayness, but I couldn't really tell. It was like a puzzle. Yes, Whitney, it was a very difficult week for my family. Sean was asked to direct four musicals. Who has the time? Speaking of, 
where is Meredith? Heather's like, she wasn't invited. (laughs) So then we see what Meredith is doing. She's at the Glad Awards with Brooks. And Brooks is like, do we have to be on the red carpet soon? We do, honey. Are you ready for your big night? I have snowshoes on. (laughs) (laughs) So Lisa comes over to Angie and she's like, hey, Angie, how are you doing? I love your house. Love the preacher. Love the dead goat. So you're going to yell at Monica today, right? Monica deserves that. Monica really started all this. So you're going to yell at Monica? It is my party at my home. I don't know if you should yell at her. Yeah, you're going to yell at her. Have fun yelling at her. Okay. Have you ever, I'll be right over here where you yell at Monica. Consider it your mission. So now Heather wants to talk to Lisa. So they're in front of this bunny cake. Heather's like, listen, I just wanted to talk to you because I talked to Whitney and she said, that you were triggered by me having Angie come to paint birdhouses at my house. So are you are you triggered? Why are you triggered? Is it the birdhouses? Do you not like birds? She's like, no, I'm triggered because nobody was ever trying to be nice to me. Like it's just it's just her. Like why is nobody nice to me? You know, nobody's ever been there for me. You know what I mean? The only person who's ever showed me some compassion is Ty Coke. I didn't know that was a black cloud raining over your head, Lisa. I mean, geez. So Heather's like, um, I thought that we've been laughing and having fun lately, and like we're okay. Yeah, because you know why, Heather? It's surface. We're just surface. We're just all saying surface. Okay, Heather. She's like, yeah, but I feel like we have a much deeper relationship with that. I mean, look, Jack's mission. Like I would love that if you could talk to me about it, that in a way that's constructive. And she's like, um, I don't want to talk about that, Heather. I do not want to talk about that, Heather. So meanwhile, Angie and Monica are having their little talk. So Angie's like, so I just wanted to chat with you. I'm happy you are here with your family. They are welcome to the food. Of course, I did notice that your mother is trying to unscrew the curtain rods from a yeah, that's what my mother does, all right? If you- mother, stop trying to take the furniture. Sorry, honey. I just wanted to say I was kind of upset because you were helping Meredith put out rumors that she wanted to put out. Uh-uh, because I said that to you, okay? And that's what makes it different. Like, I had your back, and I was there for you in that moment. And I told you 100% I was there for you, okay? I don't like the shit that's being said. I don't believe it's true. And that's why I said on camera for the entire country to hear multiple times your husband is probably sucking every single dick in the outer darkness but it doesn't mean i believe it well but wait if you don't believe it then why do you say it listen whitney asked and i said this is what meredith was saying meredith was the one who said it wait let me back it up how do you know what meredith was talking about when she said rumors well okay i didn't hear it from meredith i heard it from the slc streets okay i'm just trying to tell you what the rumors are angie And they are that your husband can put his fist in his mouth and also mix the size of semi-trucks. You didn't start the rumor, but you repeated the rumor. Yeah, but I repeated it to you. And the rumor was Sean likes to play Duck Duck Goose. But all of the geese are dicks on football teams. That doesn't even make sense. Okay, well, he plays musical dicks, and whenever the music stops, he sits on it. Okay, that one I understand. Yeah, but, like, I heard that rumor years ago before Meredith. I mean, the rumor's been everywhere in Salt Lake City for a year. But you are saying something you do not have the facts to back up. Boom. Back to Lisa and Heather. Lisa's like, why do you care about Jack's mission, Heather? Why do you care? She's like, because you're sending your kid into the wilderness for two years. Like, you should know the good and the bad of that. That's all. You know what? Your experience growing up in the church has been different from mine. My path has been so great that I converted to this faith, you know? And I just want to be focused on supporting Jack. I mean, Jack has very important work to do. We've already talked about it, Heather. Like, he's going to go door to door and he's going to tell people, you know what you're missing? Moisturized skin. And then he's going to pull out fresh wealth. But that's not what Mormonism is, Lisa. Yeah, well, it is to me. And I love that. He's going to say, you know what? You're only living life. Don't you want to live Vida? But that's just advertising your alcohol. Yeah, he's going to take around shot glasses. That's not what missions are, Lisa. They are now. You call it Jack going on a mission. I call it Vida Tequila expanding his territory. Okay, let's just talk about you and me then. Like, why won't you read my book? Oh my God, Heather, is this about your book now? Yeah, like you won't read it. I mean, I wrote this book and you didn't read it. And so now I like have to talk to you. It's like I'm willing to give you a free audiobook in person and you're still saying no. Heather, your book is just like the Book of Mormon. A lot of people may own it, but nobody's really read it. So then we cut to um, the Charisma Factory, John, over there talking to the husbands. And John's like, it's such a dichotomy. Is that the word I'm looking for? Like, 
you've got total relaxation over here with the males, but then over there with the females, you've got the polar opposite. Yeah, John, because you're fucking catatonic, bro. You're not calmer because you're a man. You're calmer because you've been lobotomized in your sleep. Be quiet. So back to Heather, she's like, you can't tell me there's like a different level of Mormonism that you have because like Mormonism is the same thing. Like I have the same Mormonism as you have. It's not nuanced. She goes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Your Mormonism might have been happier if you had a little Vita tequila in your life. That's all I'm saying. And Heather's like, I'm not really sure what gaslighting is, but I think this is it. Like telling me the religion I have been in since I was a kid was just like not what I think it is and I was doing it wrong? Yes, uh, welcome to religion, hi. But how could the Lord do it to me? You didn't pray hard enough. Yeah, you just didn't do it right. So Heather's like, wow, I mean, to be fair, I totally joined her church. I mean, God, hey, we're serving Vita tequila and strapless dresses, come on in. Yes, that's exactly right. And that is how you get people to come. I think one of the reasons Christianity is big as it is is because they included wine. They were like, come by for some wine. I think Lisa's really on the right track here. She could take Mormonism to the next level, you know? This is modern day America, though. I suggest adding some overly processed snack, some booze and some high fructose corn syrup snacks. That'll really hook them. Ronnieism. Your spirit will be full and so will your belly. Mm -hmm. Bing. Listen, Heather, you wrote a book about being a bad Mormon, and I'm focusing on my son being a good Mormon. Like, the bottom line is, like, I'm done with this. We're friends. I want to build a better relationship with y'all, but, like, this is off the table. This is off the table, all right? Heather, like, I don't want to be judged how I do things. And Heather's like, well, I am judging you because that's what Mormons do best, so I'm judging you. So then back to Monica and Angie. Angie's like, I just wish that you pulled me aside to tell me the rumors before you told other people in the room about them. And Monica's like, I did. I went straight to you and told you. I went straight to you and told you that your husband is pulling dicks out of pants like a farmer pulls carrots out of the ground. Oh, yeah. Well, I've heard things about you that I would never say. Oh, yeah? Come on, bring it then. What have you got? Foreclosure, check. Divorce, check. Affair, check. I'll stand in it every day, Angie. But if you do hear something about me and you do tell me, I'm not going to be like, oh, my God, who do you tell me about it? And Angie's like, okay, we are getting elevated. You don't need to be elevated. No, I would be like, what did you hear about me, girl? Okay, what did you hear? Because the difference between you and me is I don't fucking hide it. I don't want to hide it. Now Monica is yelling at Angie in her party because Angie's upset that Monica said on camera that Sean is trying to hide salami in the salami factory. Which again makes no sense, but what it does make is Monica a good housewife. Listen, everyone is saying it behind your back, and I'm the only one saying it to your face, and you hate me for that, and would you just be hating all the other people who said it behind your back, kind of, in a way, without the gay parts? So now Linda, the mom, comes over, and she, like, her purse, like, is, like, three times the size now. Uh, coincidence? I don't know. Oh, hello, mother of somebody. Listen, Monica, I do not hate you. I'm just trying to work it out with you. I'm sure you'd be done with this. You can just bring it up next time I see you, and you can just start coming for me, Angie. And Linda says something to her in Portuguese, and Angie's like, Girl, I only speak Greek. She's like, I'm sad your daughters are here. Monica's like, well, I didn't start this. You want to come for me? I love when people come for me, and then they get mad when I fight back. And Angie's like, I'm not coming for you, okay? I'm just trying to understand why you're going around telling people my husband's a pain machine. And Linda's like, Monica, come on, Monica. And Monica's like, I am about to pop off, girl. So Angie's like, okay, obviously I'm not going to have this conversation today. I'm going to move on now. Goodbye. And she sees her exit and gets the hell out of there, right? And Monica is so pissed at her mom. She's like, oh my God, don't pull this shit with me when you don't have my back, mother. You are in someone's home, honey. Um, I'm not going to do this with you because like, this is going to get ugly with you and I, mother. And she goes, go take a breath in the bathroom. So she's like following her around and Monica's like doing that thing where she's like starts flicking her hair because she's so angry and she walks around trying to get away from her mom but her mom just keeps following her and she's like mother do not follow me she goes you come to the bathroom now there's a beautiful amethyst candle holder that I can't carry alone and Monica's like literally I'm not going to the bathroom mother and they pass Angie and Angie's like Monica I am just trying to be kind to you and Monica's like you are not you are not trying to be kind. Only way I could find kindness in this house is if I dress like a penis and tried to hug your husband. Monica, stop it. She's like, you tell her to stop it. Sean's there now, and he's like, uh, hey, guys, we don't do this in our house, yeah? Stay out 
of this wiener cleaner. Monica. So this house is an open concept, right? There's no walls. So Monica can't get away. So she goes all the way to the corner of this huge living room and just sits alone on the couch like <laughs> huffing and puffing. And Whitney's like, where is Monica? I will find her. And Linda's telling her, just decompress. You know what? I need fun. That's what I need. So Linda goes over to the husbands and she's like, hey, boys, that's right. I'm going to have fun with the boys now. What do you want to talk about? Some sports? Let's do it, guys. Did any of you play college ball, huh? Any single boys? Any single ball players? I'm single. And Monica watches this and she's like, I'm completely confused about what my mother is doing right now. Like, I have no idea why she feels the need to apologize for me to people she's never met before. I feel completely betrayed. Team Linda. Can't believe I'm saying it. But So now Angie's like, okay, it is time to do Greek dancing. Opa. Okay, we are going to do the Opa dance. It's like the chicken dance, but you say Opa instead. Da 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 Opa. Opa. Get it, everybody? Ones. Everybody take some ones. Linda goes to Monica, who's still patting on the couch watching all of this. And Monica is sitting there with her feet up on the couch. I mean, Monica is just so tacky. And I know that Linda wants to pretend that she's this, like, great moral center trying to rein her daughter in. But you raise this. Okay, you raise this lady sitting with her feet on the couch, screaming about someone's husband being gay in front of people. Okay, that's you. You did that. So Linda's like, I met some guys. Yeah, I'm going to go dance, but I don't want to leave you alone. So I'll stay here with you. And meanwhile, we see her kids like having fun and picking up the cash and stuff. And Linda's like, you know, you're my daughter and you're my concern today. And she's like, I don't believe that, mother. You literally wanted to go dance. So just go dance. That's all you want to do. She goes, yeah, but it, just because I want to dance doesn't mean that I'm not concerned about you and that I don't care about you, honey. She goes, oh, yeah, your behavior is what lets me know that you don't care about me. Your behavior, your words, how you act and how you apologize to other people is what shows me that I'm not your concern. You are her concern. You're very concerning. OK, if your kid shits the floor, you're supposed to apologize to everybody. That's just how it works. You don't want her apologizing. Don't shit the floor. And Linda's like, honey, you're you're shouting at a family event. She goes, does that even matter? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> so she goes, um, I'm actually very grateful for Mormons like this because it reminds me of what I don't ever and won't ever do to my kids. Like, I won't let her sit alone, okay? And I won't let her be massacred. Who got massacred? <laughs> you were confronted about doing something that you did. Is this funny to you, mother? And Linda's like, yeah. Like, how can it not be funny? She's like, you are heartless. <laughs> Stay with your friends and party and find your own ride home. Dead ass. Find your own ride home, mother. So then she, like, storms out and she takes all of her kids. This isn't cool. You know what I mean? You can't take the poor children away from the free candy. That's just cold. I think that's very selfish. And then her kids are stuck there looking like, oh, God, we have to go. Their mom has just made an ass out of them. Now she's rude their fun and all the other kids are like what the fuck so they have to leave i just hate wishing that i had a different mom you know who else is gonna sound like that all four of your children when they're on housewives one day recalling the traumatic time that their mother dragged them away from the only candy they were getting that year how dare you and that brings us to the end of the show everybody thank you so much for being here ben will be back next week feel better my little banuni love you guys talk to you next time Ding. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Stroll in the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Erin McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurtz. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kiss arino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. Roo Roo La Roo. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh, she's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. 
Junie, my favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Nancy Cease and DeSisto. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. Shannon, out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She's quite the catch, it's Victoria Cotchett. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch Our Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at Wondery. 